colleagues, I come before you today to present to you House Bill 1578. Planned Parenthood of the Heartland is opposed to House Bill 1578. It gives more informed com information to the woman at a most difficult time in her life when she is choosing whether or not to have an abortion. This bill would require physicians to share medically inaccurate information with their patients and would require the Arkansas Department of Health to publish materials with medically inaccurate information not found in fact. Motion passes. Bill passes. found out I was pregnant, I didn't want to have an abortion. I've always been against it growing up. And then the reality of everything just like, it just became just one thing after another, trying to decide what we were going to do. You're too young, you need to go out and have fun. I don't know if I can do it. James isn't sure about having the baby. I'm trying to go to school and figure out my career. You know, like, I can't do this. I don't have a job that's gonna support me and trying to support the both of us. I'm kind of a kid, not really. I don't know if I can do it, and it scares me. I had just broke up with my boyfriend before I found out I was pregnant and carrying his child. So at that point, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I am a Christian, so my decision was very back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not financially stable to bring in another child. I'm trying to reach some goals that I've been trying to reach before the kids that I have. The very first thing that you're going to do today is take the abortion pill called Mifeprex. So as soon as you take that pill, just keep in mind that it does begin the abortion process even though you don't experience any physical yeah. symptoms today, okay? As soon as you take it, it does begin it by stopping the hormones. Okay. Any questions over your first day? No. No? Okay. So that's all for the first day. So the second part, they call it day two to day three because you have 24 to 48 hours to take the rest of the medications. You're going to have light cramping, light spotting, then it'll start getting a lot heavier. And after a couple of hours, it'll slow down. So that's pretty much all of the medication. No questions? No. Okay. Like when you're there and you're already in the office and they're doing the sonogram and everything, you kind of just, I just felt like I had to do it then. So I took the first pill. But then I got home and was second guessing everything. So I just Googled it, um, like how to reverse the, like the first pill from the um, abortion. And that's where I met Debbie. Welcome to the training, ladies. Thank you for listening to your heart and raising your hand to say you would take this volunteer position. So what I do is a little bit controversial. It's not well known yet that progesterone can attempt to save a baby that's been exposed to mifepristone. I would like you to go to abortionpillreversal.com. According to the stories of the people we've helped so far, they go online and say, I regret my abortion or is an abortion reversible? And then you see the main number pops up. That call comes and then it goes to your phone. We believe um, foundationally that any woman has a right to change her mind and that because we have no birth defects and that progesterone has been used safely for 40 years, we feel that this is a safe, reasonable, and beneficial treatment. Hello, uh, my name is Debbie Bradle. I am the nurse manager for Dr. George Delgado of the Abortion Pill Reversal Program. I was given your number by a woman in the UK who is seeking to receive progesterone to hopefully attempt to reverse the effects of the mifepristone that she took a few hours ago. We don't have more than 20 calls a day, so there's about 2,500 abortions a day, so we're not getting a lot of calls. 
but even if we save one life, it is worth it. Um, at the least, I would like to send you our studies so that you can see there are no birth defects associated with the Mifepristone. Uh, thank you very much. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you like that? What just happened? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like that's a real person that you're, you know. I know. And she know. has a child and she really is in desperate need now. I know. I know. So in Arkansas, there are several laws that are designed to make it more difficult for a woman to obtain a safe legal abortion. So I'm going to be giving you the information that you're required by law to hear at least 48 hours before you can have an abortion in Arkansas. I literally have to read a script to you, okay? So if you have any questions as I go, just feel free to stop me. I do tell my patients the materials prepared by the Arkansas Department of Health. This one in particular is regulated by our legislature, so there is some information that's medically inaccurate. I'm required to inform you that it may be possible to reverse the effects of medication abortion drugs. That's not been studied and it's not recommended by leading experts in our The statement is medically if inaccurate. You do want I'm required to inform you that it may be possible to reverse the effects of medication abortion drugs. Have the option to pair or adopt. Information regarding those options is your literature provided by the Arkansas Department of Based Health. Based on your ultrasound, um, you are eight weeks and two days. I'm required by law to describe the characteristics of the pregnancy at the time you would have your abortion. The statement is medically inaccurate. I'm required to inform you that it may be possible to reverse the effects of medication abortion drugs. Arm and leg buds develop and organs are starting to form. you have any questions about that? The quote-unquote abortion reversal. It's kind of difficult to, to study something like this. It was an anecdotal study, which is something that is informative but not conclusive. And anecdotal evidence is not something that, that we base our medical decisions on. This is the pill that you swallow here, and you do that whenever you're ready. it was like a weight lifted off of my shoulders. We are not opposed to the states who have passed legislation for informed consent, even if it's only 10 women in the whole state who learn that there is a reversal program. The more a woman knows about her situation, the more confident she is to receive proper health care. If this was based on sound medical evidence, then of course it's something that we would be compelled to counsel our patients on. However, I don't believe that it's right that we provide them bad information. And this law is based on the fact that our politicians believe that women doubt their decisions and they're not capable of making those decisions. Um, and and I, don't, I just don't believe that that's the case. attitude just changed within like those 24 hours. It was a weird feeling because it felt so good just to fix it all. <laughs> Six months. Really? Yeah. We always thought that was a very brave and courageous thing to do. So we decided to reward them and do the baby shower. I'm Chuck. I'm uh, Samantha's dad. My little girl. I know you had called me, asked me what you should do. I told you no matter what decision you made, I'd always support you. I'm glad this is how things turned out. We were so excited and we're so thankful for you guys. I think once she's here, being a mom's just gonna be natural, hopefully. <laughs> I can hope for. <laughs> Ooh, it's been a it's been a hell of a ride. <laughs> Me 
keeping that child would be me being a single mom again, having to tough it out and do it all over my, by myself, just like I have been doing. And it's a struggle. It's hard. My decision does not make me feel bad or guilty. I feel like this is a life lesson. And I know I did not decide to keep my baby. I think it was a part of God's plan anyhow for me to learn from this lesson and live from it and move on from it.